Welcome back to my channel. Please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you won't miss any future videos. I am going to review Love and Hip Hop Atlanta Season 11, Episode 7. This episode was really, really, really good. This episode was episode I was waiting on that I thought was going to be from last week, but the big argument didn't happen to the end of last week's episode. So, now that um is like a continuation so the episode starts with sierra and scrap still arguing like i said sierra takes it to a whole new level sierra is truly disrespectful she really put her hand on him first and he like removed her hand and i just be feeling like sierra might be a narcissist y'all because she be gaslighting then after she put her hand on him she said he wanted to fight her and it just looked bad because all he did was kind of like move her hand off of his chest. And then like she gets in the car crying, you know, saying he did the most. No, she was crying y'all because she knew she had did the most. Females can be narcs too. That's why Sierra is in a relationship before she's out of another one. And that's why she just yell, hey, I'm a rich B-I-T-C-H, but Sierra needs to mind her business like she is Sierra is miserable number one Erica Mena is miserable number two and Bambi is miserable number three <laughs> they are the miserables I'm telling you so anyway the next scene Yandy Mendici speaks about his um his interview with at the club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp and how he said he put his mom up for collateral as a drug dealer. You know, that's what he said in his interview. And, you know, his mom is rightfully mad. You know, and it was just all over the blogs. I, I remember it when it came out, too. Um, and I honestly, let me be honest with y'all. I really don't care about Yandy's storyline. I, I mean, we'll see how her storyline develops, but... That's pretty much was that. Next scene, Spice goes to the doctor to get her stent removed. And she finds out that the doctor um, says that she has another hernia. She's just frustrated, understandably. I'm not sure how people get hernias, but I'm sure they are painful. And I just, I really feel bad for Spice because I know she wants to continue to perform. And it's just a health situation after a health situations for her. So that was sad to see that, but... In the next scene, all the ladies get together and they go to like a yoga retreat or like a healing spa. And it was hosted by Jessica, who is, you know, Nick Cannon's ex-girlfriend. So um, I kind of like this because I think Amy got a chance to meet the rest of the girls. Erica Banks wasn't there. Um, and so it was pretty much, uh, who was it? Sierra, Jessica. It was the miserables. All the miserables was there. Bambi and um, Erica Mena, of course. And then Yandy and then Rashida came kind of late. Sierra and Rashida actually came kind of late. But uh, I noticed that Sierra said something like, hey, I'm a Gemini and we have two personalities. So I'm in my head, I'm like, okay, so this explains it, you know. Um, but uh, Yandy, you know, she asks Bambi how she's doing and stuff like that. And she, uh, something that, Bambi said that was interesting it was like Scrappy and Mama D has like a their relationship is like emotional incest now I can't say that Mama D depends on Scrappy emotionally because that's in my mind that's what I think about emotional like when I hear emotional incest I think okay like the parent is leaning on the child for emotional support when it should be the opposite way or the parent should be leaning on another adult for emotional support, but I can say it's an enmeshment going on, uh, and the boundaries of their, of Scrappy and Mama D relationships are blurry. The lines are blurry, mostly because Scrappy, you know, was Mama D's, you know, like, I feel like Scrappy was Mama D's friend, and allegedly, I feel like, I actually feel like he said this, but allegedly he helped her with her drug dealings in the street back in the day. And now they work together basically for 11 years. They both been on Love and Hip Hop. So as Scrappy, to be Scrappy's girl or wife, it's going to be tough to penetrate their relationship. Then they start talking about, um, Amy asked the question, do they think that women set their standards too high? And they were like, no. And I agree with that. Keep your standards high. Keep your standards all the way up there. 
keep them at 100. So if you meet a guy that meets 80%, at least they still up there. But don't set your standards low, all the way low, because that's a no-no. Up Safari flirting with Jessica. And here we go again, the millions. I feel like they all just kind of ganged up on Jessica and asking Jessica, well, he was flirting with you, but were you flirting back? And you could tell Erica Mena, when her face dropped, you could tell it's like this jealousy that she still has over Safari. And I'm like, who cares? He can flirt with whoever he wants to flirt with. Y'all are not together. Bye. And I just felt like they did kind of slightly gank up on Jessica at the event that they invite that she invited them to. They're they they're mean girls for sure. They gotta stop it. So it's like a scene where Yandy and Rashida, they go off to themselves and um, Yandy pretty much tells Rashida what's going on with Mendeecey and what he said in the interview about, you know, his mom. But that was just a small little scene. But anyway, Jessica cries again about Nick Cannon. She got to stop next. So the girls uh, get massages and they talk about like 50-50 relationships and what they expect in a partner. Jessica and Erica Mena they're over there getting some type of oxygen and they are bonding over the fact that they both have fibroids. I did not know Erica Mena had fibroids. So I was dealing with that. So I thought that was, even though in the earlier scene, they kind of was like, oh, you was flirting with Safari. I felt like they put that past them and they was able to um, bond like on a womanly level because that's something that a lot of women deal with. In my other video, it was like a lot of women are dealing with fibroids. Like... That I just think that's crazy to me. But even after that wonderful conversation, she still brings up her, like, jokingly says something to Jessica about flirting with Safari. And I'm just like, look, Safari, y'all y'all done, right? Safari's done with you. You're done with him. Move on. So next scene, Mendeecey meets with his mom to apologize. Next. Because I'm not really, I don't really care about that situation. But next. Chaotic has a video shoot for his song, Appreciate Me, which I really, really love this song. Erica Banks pull up. I thought that was cute. She was looking real cute. And, and he invites Amy, which <laughs> it was so funny because Amy walks up talking about, I was supposed to be the main video girl. And I'm just laughing because I know he didn't told Erica the same thing. And then you already know, um... Sierra pull up on that BS, so I know he probably told Sierra you're going to be one of the main video girls. Chaotic is a mess, bro. So I just thought that was so funny because I know they for real not going to fight over Chaotic. They need to stop it. Then they were wearing some of the same material, but opposite colors. I thought that was so funny. Like, Erica had on, like, this black-looking leathery outfit. Then Amy had on, like, this little light-colored silver-looking leather le leathery outfit. <laughs> I just thought, like, this this got to stop. But anyway, miserable number one show up, which is Sierra. Keep up with these numbers. Miserable number one is Sierra. She show up. And just start an intentional argument with Chaotic about at his video shoot about him not breaking up the fight between her and Scrap. Like, you know what? I'm going to say one thing about Chaotic Confessionals. His confessionals says it all. He makes so much sense in his, in his confessionals. Maybe because he's able to watch it back and then talk about it. So he's able to like... But in it, I just wish... Some of the stuff I wish he would say to her in the scene that he says in his confessional, because then it would just really kind of like get her. Like she would, she would just bust her, he would just bust her bubble if he would just say what he say in his confessionals in the scene. But Sierra cannot start an argument with the man, with Scrap, and expect the man not to argue back because he's a man, and then says Chaotic should have stopped the argument that she started. This is just gaslighting to its fullest for me. I Sierra, I don't know. I'm looking at her differently. And it, it actually kind of gives some insight into why all her relationships are just failed. Because I can't imagine just even being a male friend around her and di enduring all this that scrappy and chaotic got to take from her. And, and picture being a man who's actually having this romantic relationship with her and have to deal with her mouth and her perspective and point of views is just 
no, I can't. I cannot. But anyway, she leaves, and Amy leaves the video shoot too because I, I just feel like Amy tried to take up for Sierra and trying to tell chaotic where Sierra was coming from. But I think Amy wanted to leave anyway when she walked up and seen Erica and chaotic and all that. I think she just realized that chaotic like Erica thanks a little bit more so she also left the video shoot scrappy pulls up right in time because <laughs> all of them left and then scrappy pulls up and then chaotic explains what sierra had just said before she had left and you know what chaotic tells scrappy to be the bigger person and apologize but i just don't agree i'm like no because i just feel like when he apologized is gonna like vindicate her and condone her behavior especially if she don't realize that she really needs to be apologizing to him so i understand chaotic just wanted to tell him you know what you were wrong you didn't control your emotions just apologize blah 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 but at the end of the day no scrappy was definitely provoked and and he was definitely in defense mode and just taking up for himself and you shouldn't apologize you should not have to apologize for that so yeah the next scene spice yandy and rashida meet up and i think um i think that's yandy's restaurant but anyway spice expresses her health concerns to them and they console her and then spice gets like a random call i don't say random but spice gets a call from her daughter on facetime and it's just like her daughter looks terrible like it looks like her daughter had a um allergic reaction because her face was swollen her one of her eyes was swollen so spice just like abruptly leaves the scene and i think she calls her sister and she has like this big breakdown and i just feel like listen spice needs to relax she's been arguing with carly she's been arguing with mita you know, she's been trying to perform from her uh, last uh, health situation. Now she got another hernia. Now her daughter is sick or had an allergic reaction. She just has to take a step back. Understand that life and health is more important than even than your fans. We love you, but if you're not here to perform then what is the point of that? She needs to listen to Shekana because in the earlier episode, Shekana walked in and said, you ain't ready for this. You shouldn't be performing right now. And she just need to take a step back and take it one day at a time. Um, but yeah, that is my recap and review of Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. Please, please, please hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you won't miss any upcoming videos. Because I think I'm going to um, recap Real Housewives of New York. Because th those those couple episodes has been have been real good. So if you're, if you're interested in Real Housewives then yeah, please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell because I'm going to start reviewing the uh, New York franchise. But yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Bye.